two weeks from today, Barack Obama Inauguration Day, but he is already attempting to transform Washington. Today, he meets with his senior economic advisors, and we are joined by CBS News White House correspondent Chip Reed with more on that. Good morning, Chip. Well, good morning, Harry. I'm in front of the Hay Adams Hotel here in Washington. It's the Obama's home away from home for the next 10 days. And with the Obama girls back in school, Barack Obama has his own math problem to work on, how to put together a stimulus package that gets both Republicans and Democrats on board. He may not be commander in chief just yet. But Mr. Obama is wasting no time on Monday picking former Clinton White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta to head the CIA and retired Admiral Dennis Blair to be Director of National Intelligence. And that's not all, pushing congressional leaders to move quickly on that economic recovery package. We've got to act boldly and we've got to act swiftly. We cannot delay. He held economic crisis talks on Capitol Hill Monday, telling Congress he wants a stimulus package that doesn't just spend money, but also cuts taxes to the tune of $300 billion and creates up to 3 million jobs. And he wants the bill on his desk in a matter of weeks. This president-elect has put incredible uh, urgency in front of this proposal. I still think it's going to take about a month to get it done. But the 111th Congress faces its own new set of challenges, starting with Roland Burris, the man picked by Illinois' scandal-ridden governor to fill Mr. Obama's seat. Like it or not, he's in Washington today and expects to be sworn in. I, I am going there to be seated. I am the junior senator from the state of Illinois. That's not so fast. The majority leader, Mr. Reid, has said unequivocally that he will not seat uh, someone who is appointed by Governor Blagojevich. There's also the matter of seating senators from New York, Delaware, and Minnesota, where results showing Democrat Al Franken the winner still haven't been certified. On top of that, cabinet confirmation hearings get underway later this week, plus a mind-boggling to-do list. And to deal with that mind-boggling to-do list, they're going to be a little shorthanded on Capitol Hill. They're getting sworn in today, 98 senators. No, not 100. There will be 98, two of them still wrapped up in controversy. One of those, of course, Roland Burris of Illinois. Maggie? But is he convinced he'll be sworn in? Let's ask him. Chip Reed, thank you. Roland Burris joins us live this morning from Washington for an exclusive interview. Good morning, Mr. Burris. Good morning. Do you believe you'll be sworn in today as the junior senator from Illinois? Well, I do believe I will be. I'm certainly presenting myself uh, as a legally duly appointed United States Senator from the state of Illinois uh, this, uh, this morning to the United States Senate. And therefore, uh, it is my hope and prayer that they recognize that the appointment is legal and that we must get on about the business of putting this aside and moving on to solve some of these crises that Illinois and this country are facing. The man who appointed you, Rod Blagojevich, uh, there, there's been a criticism about him that, that he's delusional, that he's acting as if nothing happened and going on with business as usual. What would you say to people who say the same about you, who say that you don't seem to understand that you have not been certified, you have not taken the oath of office, and therefore you are not the junior senator from Illinois? Well, I certainly respect their views, but as I re read the U.S. Constitution, it says the governor shall fill a vacancy. And I, as a former attorney general of my state, I have no knowledge where a secretary of state has veto power over a governor's carrying out his constitutional duties. But Mr. Burris, legal or not, is this really the way that you want to reach the Senate against the objections of the senators that you'll be working with and even the president-elect who's hoping to come in uh, smoothly and avoid drama? Well, no, I, I'm certainly not looking for drama. They're causing the drama. My appointment is legal. There's nothing that says <laughs> that there's something wrong with Roland Burris. Are you saying that there's something wrong with me? I'm qualified. I was elected four times in my state. I was a cabinet member of, the, of my governor's cabinet. I uh, certainly have been the president of the National Association of State Controllers. I've been the president of the National Association of State Auditors, Controllers, and Treasurers. I've been a vice chairman of the Democratic National Committee. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with Roland Burris, and there's nothing wrong with his appointment. Everyone and has... The fact has that pardon me, the fact to say that something's wrong with the governor, then you all have to deal with that. But the governor is still the governor of Illinois, and he's still out of the power. As a matter of fact, the governor just signed a directive that Rahm Emanuel's seat will be filled by special election. And the Secretary of State 
signed that document. What's the difference? I was just going to, to interrupt to, to say that everyone has said that you are qualified, that you have a stellar reputation, but they say that's not the issue. The question is, if, if, you're so, if you're so qualified, why not wait to be appointed or elected in a less controversial way? Certainly, because the people of Illinois need to have two senators on the ground preparing to carry out the wishes and desires to try to impact their quality of life. And we cannot let our 13 million people of Illinois be shorthanded in this regard. I am very dedicated to public service. And the reason why I took this seat is because I know I can make a difference trying to help out with our citizens in, in this great state. All right, Roland Burris, we will be watching what happens in Washington today. Thank you so very much. Thank you.